Hi everybody, I am Jen Johnson and you are watching Thought by Thought Healing where I talk about everything related to chronic pain and chronic symptoms. I am a chronic pain coach and I also work with people who have any type of chronic symptoms and I help people to reverse them by understanding pain neuroscience combined with the gospel because as you will see in this next interview, they really do go hand in hand and it's pretty amazing when we look at the science of expectation and what we claim with our tongue, our beliefs and um, how those things, our thoughts, emotions, beliefs and how they play out in our bodies physiologically in a way that actually can cause chronic symptoms. But when we use that same approach, through the mind-body connection, we can actually reverse them. And all these things line up um, perfectly with biblical principles. So if that's important to you, you're in the right spot and you should subscribe. And if you're listening on podcast platforms, I would love it if you would leave me a review. That's how we get this information out there. If you're interested more in what, if, if you are interested more about what I do, then you can check out my website, which is thoughtbythoughthealing.com and uh, shoot me an email at thoughtbythoughthealing at gmail.com. So um, today I get to talk with Matthew Stevenson, and I was actually um, sent an article that was written about him and his healing journey. And so I asked him if he would be willing to be interviewed. It's the first time he's done an interview, and it was absolutely uh, a joy to just hear about what God did in his life um, through this. So for him, he actually discovered um, healing principles through scripture before he found it in uh, recent neuroscience. And so that is not the normal way that um, most people who have healed um, go about this journey. So I hope that you guys enjoy and I hope that you pick up some nuggets from um, just his own experience in reversing his uh, symptoms. All right, guys, enjoy. Talk to you later. All right, you guys, I am super excited today. I get to have Matt Stevenson with me today. Uh, Matt, thank you for, for showing up today. Oh, you're welcome. Nice. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I had a client send me a, basically an article that was written, I believe, about you. Is that correct? Did you write it or did Dan write it? So Dan wrote the article. So we okay. um, we, so yeah, we, we met in Starbucks and then we... Uh, Obviously, he's known a lot of my journey as it is, but he's never sort of he'd never put it sort of he'd never sort of wrote written about it or anything like that. So he wanted to sort of capture it as sort of uh, from sort of the journey from start to finish, really. So yeah, we did that sort of one afternoon. Yeah, which is was super exciting to hear and to read, in part. Well, first of all, just because getting this information out there is, is so exciting, but also because we have a shared faith in, in God. So that thank you for being bold and, and sharing that part of your journey with the world. Oh, no, it's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure. Yeah, it's uh, something, that, uh, something that I never hide. It's, um, yeah, well, it's sort of the crux of, it's the crux of my healing journey. So it's, um, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, I, I, I 100% agree. Mm hmm. Yes. Well, OK, so let's just start by um, I mean, we can start wherever you want to, but maybe mm -hmm. around the time that you started to have symptoms. Let's go there. What was happening okay. in your life? So I, everything was great. I remember just um, I remember I'm trying to think how old I would have been. So I probably would have been about 24. Okay. So I will have been. I was working for the National Autistic Society at the time. Um, I was actually well, well, the evening. The evening when it sort of happened, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a progressive thing. I was on holiday at the time in a place called Guernsey in the Channel Islands, so it's not far from France. Uh, one of my best friends lives there, so I had uh, he just recently moved there, so I went to go and visit him for a for a month. Um, oh. uh, basically, what happened was I was, so I was on holiday. I woke up in the middle of the night. To go to the bathroom and was just I basically couldn't move it, it was just really really weird and scary so I remember as in it was painful to move or you couldn't move as in initially you know when you sort of you wake up in the middle of the night your instinct is you just get up don't you I remember waking up going to get up and just feeling excruciating pain from head to toe which sort of stopped me from getting up 
Wow. So I, I remember sort of lying there thinking, "What? what's this? I, then it probably, he only lived in a sort of a small apartment, so the bathroom would have been maybe, I don't know, from one room to the next. I would say it probably took me about, I don't know, 40 minutes to get there. Did so, you fall? Took, uh, no, I probably, I walked, but I, when I say walked, it was more of a, <laughs> it was more of a snail's pace, but it probably took me about 15 minutes to get up. Wow. You know, just, just agony, and it was. I just remember, just panic. I think more than anything else, just like, what is this? Um, and then it's weird because so from there, I don't actually remember the rest of the holiday. My mind's a bit of a blank there. So from from that, from the incident of getting the waking up, going to the bathroom, being in agony, my next memory from there is being at home, and then going to see a private consultant about it, because. Um, I was like my mum, so I, I, I brought up um, so my mum and dad. Uh, my mum, uh, mum, my mum got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis when she was probably in her early twenties. So from the moment I was born up until you know, I've, I've, I've never, you know, I always saw my mum in pain. She was always sort of, you know, it was just what I lived through. Um, I don't remember ever recall ever thinking to myself growing up, or oh, you know, that's something I'll get. I just it was just it was almost just the norm. Mm. Uh, but obviously, then when it triggered, I guess that was then the fear of have I got what she's got? Right. Um, so obviously, we went to the consultant to try and find out. So did a did a lot of tests, etc. Did some blood tests, um, and anyway, the results came back that it wasn't rheumatoid arthritis. It was this what they called cirrhotic arthritis. So. I think obviously the difference being where my mum, the, the arthritis my mum had actually affected all of her joint, all her joints. So sort of her hands were sort of, she couldn't sort of open her hands and she, she, you know, it was sort of evident all over her body and she was in pain all the time, but it was, you know, her joints were sort of disfigured. Whereas mine was more sort of inflammation around the joints okay. rather, than, rather than actually affecting the joints themselves. So in a way that was a relief. Um but then, yeah, and then it was just a case of trying to navigate that. Then, so what were so what were the symptoms that came with that? Was it inflammation then, and and pain that was around all all of your joints? Yeah. So initially, yes, um, it was it was predominantly it sort of moved. I found it sort of moved around. So it could be in my wrists, it could be in my ankles, it would be. Yeah, it would hurt to get up. It was it was just like a, there was specific areas where it would target, but then it was just sort of generalized aches and pains as well at the beginning. Okay. Um, yeah, it was just very strange. Yeah. Just the How, fact that it came, it seemed to come out of nowhere. And what did they say was the prognosis? What was going to happen to you going forward with this diagnosis? Well. I think the thing with the with the what I found is with the autoimmune diseases as they call them, I, I think they just they, they sort of just it feels like they just make it up as they go along. So I think so. Obviously, the prognosis they do say that you know, a full remission is very very slim without some kind of treatment. Okay. Um, so obviously, the, you know, you, the, I was diagnosed some anti-inflammatory medication. Okay. Um, a couple of them. So um, that didn't agree with my system. I came out in a bit of a rash, this, that, and the other, until they found one that seemed to work. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, I, I didn't really think long-term, if I'm honest. I was just taking it sort of step by step. I just remember thinking, okay, I'll take these. The pain seems to be easing a little bit. We'll just, we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so how long was that part of your journey then while you – uh, assumedly accepted this diagnosis and this I'm going to call it mm. a death sentence like um, <laughs> how <laughs> is that how it felt like a death it sentence just, it felt it just felt really odd I mean going from being really fit and healthy I say fit and healthy I was <laughs> relatively fit, you know, with fit and healthy in that I didn't have any sort of ailments or any diagnosis to then yeah, it was strange. I think at the time when it sort of came about, I would then sort of, have, I think probably then think about my mum. And then part of me was then thinking, yeah. was, it, was it just a matter of time? Is it inevitable? I guess you start thinking all different types of things. 
Right. Um, but yeah, so I remember taking the medication for, so that was probably around 2004. Okay. Probably for, I can't remember how long I remember. I can't remember how long I took the medication for, but I remember getting to the point where I just thought, I've had enough of this. I'm not living, I'm not, it was more sort of, it wasn't connected to my faith at that point. I think it was just my personality saying, I'm just not, I'm not having it. So I just, I wouldn't recommend my advice to be, to anybody listening wouldn't be to suddenly take away, you know, throw away all the medication. It might not, but it's probably not the, you know, it wouldn't be sort of medically recommended. Okay. <laughs> but Is that what you did? Yeah. You I just did. Decided, yeah. I just thought I'm not taking this anymore. I'm not living with medication. Um, it's going to be, be it's going to be beaten okay and so how how did you how did your brain how did your brain respond to that because when it, the mind is so interesting when yeah. you threw away all of your medications hmm. did your brain perceive that as safe like a, a powerful thing to do or was it um did your symptoms increase and it was kind of a scary time I think it was probably, if anything, it was more of an exciting, empowering time in that I just felt that I'm not a victim here. I get to decide this. I'm not going to live with this, you know, I'm not going to live with this sickness mentality. I'm going to, you know, it's going to be, it's on my terms. Yeah. And, the, and it's funny, I think years later, I remember thinking, well, where I'm at now, I remember, you know, it's, as the pro, it's been a journey to get to the point because I've had different flare ups along the way. But the, the more the more that I recognise the patterns and how it how it works, I found that get getting it out of my body has been quite easy. It's been getting it out of the mind that's been the tough. There's been has been you know the tough bit. Can you talk about that more? Yeah. So you know, just I get I guess it was probably around that time when I started deciding with the medication I'm not having this I'm, I'm, I'm just going to get I'm going to get myself better it's around that time where I started I started going to church again so I hadn't been I hadn't been for about 10 years I would I would just I realized that about 16 I probably just went because my family always taught me as much as that was a good thing um then when I, I guess when I was at the age where I could decide for myself it was like, oh, all right then well, I, I won't go then yeah but obviously it says doesn't it? train a child in the way he should go and he'll never depart from it will he so it was always in there and then around around about when i was about 28 i just felt i felt impressed to go back so anyway i was obviously around people of faith and people who believed in healing and things like that and they would you know they would say things to me like you know you're well you know you're healed things like you know sayings like that and i remember thinking it used to annoy you annoyed me at first yeah because i remember thinking, i remember thinking well i'm not healed i'm in pain yeah. Right. You know, so, so that used to irritate me. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so th that used to annoy me. But then the sort of the, obviously the deeper I went with it and the sort of the more I sort of got into, you know, f reading the Bible and sort of you know, following my faith stronger, I, re I actually realized that actually they were right. And to get well, I had to see myself well before I got well. Yeah. I think, you know, I think we live, we live in an age, don't we, where, you know, seeing is believing. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I had, to, I had to believe it before I saw it. Yeah. But it's only it's only when I got to that stage of, you know, believing it before I saw it that my body just, you know, your body just lines up to you, your body ultimately just does what it's told. Yes. You know, Our mind is, is in control. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. I just, I just, I just come to learn that you know, the body is just objective. You know, and it's just, it's, it's just fascinating, isn't it? It's almost like, you know, you can be in the safest environment in the world. What your mind can, you know, your body can be reacting like it's in fight or flight mode, just just purely out of the thoughts that we're thinking. Yeah, absolutely. It's quite scary. It's quite scary. So, and then I realized, you know, I realized I started thinking back over my past then of you know different times where I put myself in scenarios where I was, you know, just, just living living a lifestyle where I, I, you know I didn't need to. I remember thinking I, was, I probably spent a lot of my past in fight or flight mode when I just it was just unnecessary. So I remember I missed that sentence. Can you say that sentence again? Mm, I was just I started thinking back, just I was sort of backtracking in my thoughts to down sort of thinking about my past and just sort of decisions that I'd made sort of that probably weren't in line with my beliefs, sort of maybe like lifestyle choices and relationships and that type of thing. 
Mm-hmm. I'm probably thinking I've probably lived a lot of my past in fight or flight mode just based on decisions that I've made that I didn't need to. And I think in, you know, as a result of that, my body's probably paid the price of that. Yeah, that because... conflict, that inner fight. So, yeah. I mean, speaking of fight or flight, now you've got this fight inside of you. One part of you is doing one thing and your belief system is is in a different place. Is that kind totally, of Totally, yeah. About? Yeah, but I just don't, I don't think I recognized it. So as I was doing it, I'd had no, re- I didn't really, re- I didn't realize it really because I wasn't sort of walking, you know, I wasn't walking, walking out my face. So it was just, I was, I was living a lifestyle that felt okay at the time, but in high, in hindsight, when I, as I was walking, as I should have been doing, I realized that actually that was not really what I should have been doing. So obviously then you've got a bit of, you know, your guilt trips in then you not so much shame, but then you start feeling a bit, you know, your condemnation kicks in then that oh, I've been doing X, Y, and Z. Well, I know I shouldn't have done that. And then you just end up down this rabbit warren of, is that what's caused it? Is that triggered things? Then so you, then you, did you start to view it as a punishment then? I don't think a punishment. I think I think for me, I've got a very inquisitive mind. And I think my, one of the one of my main issues has been and when one of the things that's caused potential flare ups in the past has been my need to work out what the reasons have been for it. So. For, okay. for, for me, okay, I mean, it's always like cause and effect, isn't it? This has happened. Why has it happened? And if I can work out why it's happened, then I can stop it happening again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think I spent a lot of time, especially from getting rid of the Medicaid, from the point where I decided, right, that's enough, I'm getting rid of it. I think I went on a bit of a quest to work out, right, I'm in pain. Why am I in pain? Is it because of lifestyle choices? Is it because of X, Y, and Z? Um but all that did was just make it worse because, you know, there's a, there's a scripture in there in the Bible that just says, and I stick by this, it's so powerful for me, is the, you know, a heart, you know, an undisturbed mind and heart is the life and health of the body, a, a calm and undisturbed mind and heart. And my mind was anything but undisturbed because it was just going round in circles trying to work out what had caused it. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest keys in, in the healing journey for me is, what, is that, that revelation that, doesn't matter what's called. I don't need to know. Mm. It's, you don't you don't need to know the cause to, to get well. You just need to see yourself well and believe that you are well. Okay. For, so for me anyway. Yeah. So when you um so when you were kind of going back to church and mm. finding all this uh, conversation around healing, had you discovered the mind body scientifically the mind body syndrome yet or was that to come later? Much later. So I would say that's relatively new. I, it, that's why it was it was exciting. It was exciting, I think, to just to find that and just to I was sort of reading it, I, I listening. Obviously, I, I was listening to it from people who probably didn't have, didn't have a faith, and I'm listening to it thinking, well, that's obvious. It says so in the Bible. So you discovered all this through the Bible first. And yes. then discovered that science backed it. Yes. That is a very uncommon route and beautiful. There has okay. been many times in my journey that as I as I healed, because um, I was discovering the science. Yeah. And then I kept being like, oh, what? but that's, that's what the Bible says. That's a, mm. those, those align. And so for so for me it was the opposite. Um, so we're at the same place, but mm. God brought us through through different paths. And um, I, I I love that about all this. I think that's where my my passion comes in because it's not a simple um, scientific healing journey. It is mm. definitely aligned with God's commandments and promises uh, and blessings in Scripture. Um, so it, it sounds like. God just led you in the opposite way. And that's, that's amazing. Did you find healing then? Did you start to find a reduction of pain before you discovered the mind body syndrome? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's really fascinating as well, because I would have conversations with people who was just all about the science and didn't have any faith and yeah. they'd be telling me these things. And I'd just be saying, I'd be thinking, well, of course, well, look what it says here. <laughs> And then it, it, it would just just led to interesting conversations. Yeah. Um, it's like people who believe in the science 
I've, I've spoken to people who you know believe it, you know, believe in this type of thing, believe in the healing rate because of the science, but don't believe in the faith. And yet, yeah. there's people who believe, obviously have the faith element, but it's nice to it's nice to you know when you talk to people that sort of you know interested in the both of them, you know, mi mixing together, which is you know it's really powerful. It is. It's very powerful. Yeah, and it yeah. it also makes it a very just rich experience very rich and fulfilling and life-changing um living abundantly right? yeah right. i guess so, so so now i um so obviously i'd i'd had periods where i was totally well and then um and then i'd found the mind body stuff and then it just it got me all excited it just got me more excited because it was just it was just so interesting to read just to read about how all the systems of your body work and just how it all, you know, how it all works together. It's just really fascinating. Now, again, and then you, you know, you see, you see elements of the Bible threaded all the way through it, and then you do, you can just see how it all works together. It's, yeah. um, but it's been really interesting because there was a time where, you know, I remember clearly. So I'd, I'd been well for a while. I hadn't had any pain, and then I would probably around. So my mum passed away about three years ago. Mm. And then I would, I was, I remember it clearly. I, I just started a new job. I was, um, I wasn't enjoying it. I couldn't decide what to do with my life. Uh, I was going to move. I, I was going to move away. I'd moved, I'd moved to Guernsey before. So Guernsey, where it triggered. Yeah. I'd, 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 I'd lived there twice now. So I'd lived there once since from 2017 to 2019. Okay. Came back and I was contemplating going back. I was just in a bit of a, I couldn't decide what to do. And I remember the, the whole thing about an undisturbed mind. So my mind was back and forward. Do I do I move there? Do I not? Do I? Uh, before I knew where I were, I was in. I could feel my body in pain again. And I had. A, I remember having a weekend where I was just. It just hurt to get up. And I just remember laughing. I remember this is so fascinating because I, I could just. I could. I knew what was happening. Yeah. And I just, I just remember sort of switching the phones off. I just didn't have contact with anybody and just. I just spent time meditating and praying about it. And I'm just like, this is just ridiculous. Yeah. I'm like, I know what's happening. And I'm like, I just settled everything down. Cause I was trying to, I was trying to just make the decision myself. And I remember, I remember once I'd left it alone, the pain just went, but I do, I clearly remember driving home from work one day and I remember just having a bit of a meltdown in the car thinking, and it, I didn't even realize it must've just been a subconscious thought. I remember saying out, I remember thinking to myself about my mum, and I remember thinking, I remember saying out loud, she never got well. I'm probably never going to get well. And it was only in that moment where I thought that's probably, that could have been, that could just be a long standing belief mm -hmm. that I didn't even know I had. Mm -hmm. So it's been an interesting journey with sort of you know, bottoming that out, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, it's an ongoing thing. But like I say, since that moment, that was probably in 2021, where I haven't experienced any pain since then at all. There's a lot of good nuggets in there. Um, I'm seeing a theme of, of I'm going to call it expectation, mm. but belief is a synonym here. So I'm seeing just this theme of um, God redeeming beliefs in, in your life, um, like that I'll never get well um, type of thing, or my mom was always in pain, I never will. Would you say, I mean, we call that, in the mind body community, um, predictive coding, would you say yeah. that, that changing your expectations and your beliefs around, it sounds like health was, yeah. a, uh, one of your biggest tools. Yeah. I would say one of the biggest changes in belief that I had that's changed everything is the switch in belief from, so when I was, when I started going back to church and I was new to the faith again, my but my mindset was okay i believe in healing when am i going to be healed i believe in it when I, when when is it going to happen when i switched from that to no i've got you've already been healed yeah so i was i was trying to do something to get it but what i was missing was the belief that actually i've already got it and it's that revelation that changed everything I, I'm writing that down. I'm already healed because I, I think I experienced that too. At some point in time in my journey, I remember all of a sudden one day I woke up and started saying that I was healed. And 
looking back, I realized that I was still experiencing a few symptoms. Yeah. Um, and yet I, I believed and, and I stand, I stand firm in that, that, that I, I was healed. And, mm. and I think that that is part of the process is at some point in time saying I'm healed. I'm okay. Um, yeah. there's nothing wrong with my body. And, um, I get to live abundantly in this life that God has given me with grace and forgiveness and, and all these, um, gifts that he has for us that benefit our mind in that way that you're talking about the rest of our mind. Mm. Um, that's, uh, just, just life-changing. So I, I can see that my camera is having issues. It keeps changing color. It keeps <laughs> distracting me, but okay. So going, so going from that, the expectation is one of, as one of your tools that was really helpful. What else would you say was a, a big part of your, I don't know, healing. And I realize you went about this different than most people, but what <laughs> did you find was really helpful? Uh, I think what I, th I guess one of the biggest things has been, you know, the, the, you know, they said, oh, they, you know, it says in says in Proverbs, you know, the power of life and death is in the tongue, you know, speaking it out, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it's really power, it's really powerful, you know, it's it, it's something that's really helped me, um, you know, you, you believe what you say more than anybody else says, you've got to you've got to you've got to see yourself well and you've got to confirm it and reaffirm it. You know, and I think you know, even even if you have times, or even when I had times where I sort of, you know, because you know, we're all human, we're all we're all human. We all have days where I didn't feel it. I didn't, you know, it's, it's, I think it's just accepting that. So that's, it's okay. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Right. It's okay to feel like this, but you know, just because I feel it, that doesn't mean it's true. You know, feel you know, feelings are fickle and they just lie to you. You know, it's yeah. standing on it's, it's standing on the truth, even if I don't feel it. Right. You know, and. It's again. It's difficult. It's difficult for people when, you know, it's difficult to have that conversation with people about your your well when you're not feeling it. Because I've been there. You know, I've been in agony when other people have said me, "You're healed," and I know it's it's really annoyed me. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, they're right. It, but it, but it, but it doesn't matter unless I believe it. Yeah. Right. Yes, and that that speaking out, um, saying like, "There's nothing wrong with me. I'm healed. I am okay." Um, it, I mean, it just creates this massive amount of peace in the body. I was actually doing a consult with somebody this morning, and um, we spoke out loud a lot of the things that you're talking about. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm safe. I, I am, and spoke some things that were true for her. She she needed to know, um, and her entire mind. Um, found peace in God and, and, um, and that played out in her body also. And so that I think a lot of times, um, yeah, like you're talking about in Proverbs, like using your tongue to, to, to claim these truths has this really scientifically, um, life giving, peace giving rest in, in our bodies. That's mm. amazing. It is, yeah, and you know, you know, faith, you know, one thing about faith, you know, it's voice activated. You got, you've got to claim it, otherwise, it's, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's just powerful. Alongside, I think, you know, journaling has been another. You know, I'd never, it's something I'd never done before, actually, until I started. In fact, Daniel got me into journaling. He, he, I remember him suggesting it to me, and I fobbed him off for a while. I was like, oh, I'll think about it. But no, that's been really, it's been really important because it's, it, it's just helped me get down on paper what I actually have believed because once it's there, you can see it. It's like, Oh, I actually believe that. Well, that's not right. It's only by seeing it and recognizing it that I can actually line it up with what the truth is and then confess it. Yes. I, I found that part to be hugely powerful for me is that act of, of writing and discovering what are the toxic things that I actually have hardwired into my brain about yeah. who I am versus who God actually says I am. And, and when I journaled, I was able to come out with these huge like identity pieces that were, um, that were, um, life changing. Absolutely. But the rewiring of the brain takes time. And so I found that the more I wrote and the more that I wrote about truth, mm. the more, 
the more that I, I was able to actually change the way that my brain was operating in life to actually align with what was true instead of all these false deep rooted beliefs that I had about God, me mm-hmm. and, um, uh, church Christian life, I guess I'll say. No, yeah, it's, I mean, it's because you can even even within church, well, even within the church world, I found you know so many different people have different even even have different views on healing themselves. Absolutely, you know, yeah. I've spoken to loads of different people who were who were again they pray you know they pray for healing like they're waiting for it to happen when and you you, know, you don't want to you know it's, I guess it's a sensitive topic in it but you know it's plus when you're sat there thinking you. I get your prayer; it's heartfelt, but you can't. God can't answer a prayer like that because He's already done it, and He wants you to. He wants you to get that revelation and walk in it now. I have been thinking about this a lot lately. This idea of prayer, when we oftentimes our prayers are just wiring fear, and they're just repeating yeah. with your tongue um, these distressing um, fears that we have. And instead using prayer to ask him maybe what he wants to heal emotionally instead uh, yeah. or or um, claiming truth that you already know but are having a hard time believing. And that yep. is how my prayer has drastically changed. Um, when I Even when I ask people for prayer now, I think about mm-hmm. what, what do I, what does he want me to believe? Um, so like, for example, instead of asking for prayer for uncertainty, Lord, help me feel safe in uncertainty. I would, mm. I would pray like, um, help me to know that you are good and I am safe regardless of the outcome. And so, yeah. so there's this this different way of praying because we're often. I feel like we're just begging God for something that's literally on a plate in front of us. And we're like, please, can I have some spaghetti? And he's like, it's right. It's look down. Like it's right here. Just eat it. Um, And yet I'm just like groveling and begging God to do this thing. That's already mine. I don't even really like spaghetti. I don't know why I used that example. (laughs) Um, Yes. And something else you mentioned earlier when you were talking about your mom being sick and, um, and what do you mean by letting it go? Or maybe you were talking about whether to move back to Gurney. Did I say it oh, right? Gern, Gern, close. Guernsey. Guernsey. So, um, the- um, so when you were praying about that and you, your, your mind went into turmoil about it, how did you end up making, because you had to make a decision. How did you end up making a decision in a, I'm assuming ending up making it in a peaceful way. Maybe you didn't. How'd that process yeah. go? Um, well, first of all, I just remember thinking me trying to work this out is making me feel ill. Yeah. So I need to stop so I need to stop it. And then so from there I just left it for a little bit. I'm just like, just you show me, you show me the answer. And then I then I forgot about it. Just so I stopped trying to work it out. I left it. Um and then ultimately, I just—it's—it's it's really funny actually because when I—I I, I did move back there, um, I did—I think I just had a pit. I think I just—I didn't—I I didn't know. Still, didn't really know what to do one way or the other. But I just thought, do you know what? It's okay. One way or the other. If I go, it's fine. If I don't go, it's fine. Why am I beating myself up one way or the other? Mm-hmm. It's only afterwards I started. I realized that I'd got into this habit of almost like treating the will of God like a tightrope if I turn left and he wants me to turn right, then there's an issue. You, you know, you, you almost, you want to get it so right that you're scared to get it wrong, but there is no right or wrong. It's And anyway, so I ended up moving there with the intention of never coming back. I thought my plan was I'm going to move back together. I'd sorted everything out with Thompson. My mum had passed away. That had all sorted out with, you know, family, dad and sister sort of lived together. So everything was fine family wise. I thought, right, that's all, that's all sorted out. I'm going to, Move back there, live happily ever after. <laughs> that was that was the plan. So I moved there in July, okay. and then ended up. It was December. I'd been there six months, and then in December, I remember in December, I remember I thinking, I'm done. I'm coming. I need to go back. It was almost. It was almost as though it was like a, not a grieving period. Maybe just like a. It's almost like a working holiday, but almost like. 
almost like permission to go back and just just get it all out of my system. And I, I guess I realised in that moment that I was... It was an I think it was an identity issue. I was trying to find my identity in where I lived, in a job, in everything other than in him. Yeah. And when I re it was it was only when I realised that that I'm like, what am I doing? You know, I'm in the most beautiful location in the world. I've got a great job. I'm earning loads of money. But so what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. It's just, I was just you know, I was chasing all those things when it just didn't matter. So I'm like, I just need to go home. Get because I, I knew sort of a lot of people from the old church that I used to go to. So I thought I just need to go plant myself, plant myself into a good church and just relax. You know, know that I'm good. I mean, my identity is in him. It's not in a job. It's not in a place. And then yeah, it all it's just all come together since then, really. So I, I did. I just quit my job, moved back, and yeah, here we are. So I mean, that just sounds like simply like a resting in God, regardless of, of what uh, circumstances, what decision you make that brings about circumstances is just a trusting in him that whatever happens, happens. And I yeah, mean, and knowing that, yeah, and knowing that I'm okay, and he knows I'm okay, he thinks I'm okay. And I, need to, I just need to relax and stop beating myself up about stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I resonate with that because I think um, I had fallen into a trap of praying over something so many times until I had certainty. Well, guess what? It doesn't come. <laughs> and you just keep praying and praying and praying and fretting that what if I make the wrong decision and that that perfectionism comes out mm. even in my in my ability to follow God. Um, and so I don't know about you, but I, I often now will pray about something and just trust his voice and go with it. Um, yeah. I remember him saying to me clearly, it's just three words. It was just, I just laughed because I, because I, I, like I said, I like to figure everything out. I remember him saying to me, you just need to believe it, receive it, and then leave it. Believe it, that, receive it, leave it. Yeah. And I thought, do you know what? I, 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 I knew it was, I just, you, just, you, you just know his voice, don't you? And I thought that's, yeah. I do, because because my my natural bend is to believe, receive it, believe it, and then figure it all out, <laughs> and then and then and then end up in pain. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, it's that mind blown back and forth, and there's never there's never a, a place for rest in that cycle that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah it's just never and it never it never ends well. Mm -hmm. no, it hasn't for me anyway. <laughs> Yeah, no, not for me either. No, it's, it says it says in Hebrews, and it's in the beginning. Don't think it's chapter four. It just says, you know, those who believe enter his rest. I mean, it's <laughs> just such a power. It's such a powerful place. Mm -hmm. I love it. I, I love I love the simplicity. Just ask, believe, and move forward. Let's just let's just do this thing. Um, yeah, and and trusting just you just putting one step in front of the other one and trusting that that God is going to direct my path and and redirect my path as as I move forward and um, that has definitely been true of even thought by thought healing. What I'm doing now is just one step at a time and see where God takes this. And it's definitely an act of faith. But yet, you know, when I say that, I don't mean that it's it's ridden with. Um, fear um mm. it, it's an act of faith as in i just take a step forward and do it um and th there's a difference between taking a step with fear and just taking a step and yeah. uh, seeing what he what he has uh, for us whether it's staying where you've moved or, or whatever mm. would if you were going to summarize the difference between who you were between the ages of, well, until maybe 28, maybe from the, t right before you discovered all this to now, what's, what's different about um, life? What's different about you? Um, what have you found um, the most exciting and relieving for you in this journey? Question. Mm-hmm. 
I'm trying to think, but I'm, I'm trying to think back now to to uh, to before. And I think, do you know what I think? Pre pre now, if that if that makes any sense, going through that, I'm just glad now I'm out of that period of figuring it all out. It's like I guess this is the power of what we're doing now. Hopefully, if somebody's listening to this, they can. They don't need. It. I've been around the mountain, so hopefully, someone else doesn't have to. Hopefully, they can skip a few steps. Do you know what I mean? It's. Yes. I've had to go through. I've had to go through a, probably twenty years of just, you know, probably figuring it, figuring easy things out the hard way. But that tends to be what I've done, just because of just you know, just how I've done it. You know, not not keeping it simple, but but it's got me to where I am. So ultimately, I'm thankful. That it has got to me where I am. So where I'm at now is awesome because I've just learned so much along the way. But you know, I'm I'm certain I'm definitely not where I'm. I'm 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 nowhere near where I used to be. But I, I know that there's you know I know that there's better to come. But ultimately, I'm in a place of rest, and I know how to navigate the way forward better, just in in a state of rest. But but also knowing I'm not guessing and hoping something. You know, hoping hoping is in. Oh, I hope something works out well. It's a no, it's a knowing kind of hope. I know it's going to work out well, and, and it's exciting now because I know that it's, it can't be anything but awesome. Yeah, that expectation piece is um, such a gift that we can expect that God is on our side and that He's going to direct us. Yeah. Okay. So less fear and more expecting for good things to happen. Oh yeah, and just enjoy. And I think as well, just enjoy it. I think so much of so much of the last 10, 20 years, because it's just been figuring it out and it's been pain and the physical pain and working it out. Mm -hmm. I think along in the midst of that, you just lose the you just lose the joy of just let's just enjoy the moment. Life is so short that you know, don't get me wrong, I'm, the best is yet to come. But let's just let's have let's have some fun along the way. Because I think sometimes we become so serious and trying to work it all out that we just, you know. The laughter is really good. It's good medicine, as it says. Mm -hmm. So we need to we just need to laugh more. Yes, <laughs> just have, have fun more with it as well. Yeah, there's that. There's those two things in here with the healing. One is laughing more and being in the moment, enjoying and thankfulness and mm -hmm. gratefulness. And um, there's that piece. But then, and then on the other hand, there is the 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 journaling or however you're looking at. Um, digging up those those negative beliefs we have so so i think it can be it's both and right it's like it can oh. be difficult to do mm. the work of healing because you do have to come to terms with some of these hard things that you believe and see and have learned right. while at the same time embracing joy and and both of those have to be very much so part of the redemption process of of this yeah yeah, and I think along along the way, you've just we've just got to be good to ourselves. I think some of the one of the easiest traps you can get into along, especially when you're in pain and along that journey of discovering things about yourself, is maybe being you know, having you know negative thoughts or feelings towards yourself, which yes. I think is probably one of the worst, the most damaging things you can do. Because I think ultimately, if you do that long enough, I think your body just turns in on itself, which is absolutely. I mean, we talk about danger and safety in mind body community all the time and when your own voice is so discouraging and despairing and just tears you down it, you're no longer a safe place at all and i mean my listeners have heard me talk about that all the time but um i'm thankful that you brought that up because i think that is something that even that in the christian community I, I see sometimes like a kind of a resistance against like for some reason it's not okay to build ourselves up or to be and have our own voice be encouraging we feel like mm -hmm. it somehow honors god to tear ourselves down um yeah. i also i think that's also you know i think when we think of pride that we, we think of sort of you know being too sort of cocky and thinking more of ourselves than we so should but i think that's also pride you know, not thinking of ourselves the way we should because god doesn't see us like that he sees us as you know he says that we're fearfully and wonderfully made so yeah. we should see ourselves like that yeah we, I think we've, I don't know, we've just, I don't know if it's a cultural thing or, you know, in society where we're, it's almost looked good upon to sort of play yourself down. And so, and you can see it because whenever you do, you know, show a, you know, a, you know, like a godly confidence, it can come across in some, you know, some circles as being, oh, he's cocky, he's this, he's that. When actually I'm not, I'm just seeing myself the way I should. Right. I I agree. And I think we can become arrogant when we think that oh, yeah. the way that I was made 
by God is better than the way you were made by God, that totally. that ends up being arrogance. Um, but like, I don't know why, but for me, I, I often think about standing up straight and, mm -hmm. and realizing that God has created me to be me. And then grounding in that settling back like there's not this like need to assert there's this just need to ground in that and just set back there's no need to to push myself upon other people but to just be able to sit back and know that i am fearfully and wonderfully made and um so are you and and so is the next person listening and um and the enemy really wants to tear that as that away from us um i don't often go into the talking about the enemy's territory on this channel, but it's true. There is, there is this, um, this other force that, that wants to really um, bring death. Which yeah. Is and again, I, I get, I guess that comes back, you know, it brings full circle back to the, you know, the, the power of you know, the spoken word, you know, cause that's ultimately how we go about resisting. You know, it's, it's how Jesus did it in the beginning. He resisted him by quoting the word back. And that's what we need to do. Right. That's yeah, that's very that thank you for saying that. Yes. It, that's convicting for me to memorize more scripture. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, but it's just good for us, isn't it? Because that's how we that ultimately that's how you know the only power he's got over he's got over us is what we allow by believing those lies, and we can't counteract those lies if we don't know the truth. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm. Okay. Do you have just in ending, do you have anything else that, you know, you would just like to share with anybody who is in the middle of the healing journey and mm -hmm. um, you you think you would want to know if you were where they are now and you know what you know? Mm. I guess I'd just, I guess I would just encourage anybody who's, you know, at the beginning of the journey or well, I guess wherever you are on the journey, it's, you know, healing is Depending on, I mean, people are people are sort of at different stages in their belief systems, and they believe different things. But healing is possible. You know, there, there are multiple testimonies out there of you know people who have overcome, and I would just never lose never lose sight of that, even in the midst of sort of pain, discomfort, you know, symptoms that you can't. You know, they're evident with your five senses. I would just just keep that picture in your mind of you being well. And I would just say, never lose that picture. Yeah. And just don't give up. You know, never give up. Yeah. Keep, keep believing and keep speaking. And eventually you'll see. Love it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your words of wisdom. And thank you for keeping your faith um, in the front of all this. I think it can be easy to, to end up in the mindset of I healed myself and um, I didn't need God. And so just hearing your testimony is, um, yeah, I love it. Yeah. No, I only, I only, I only, um, I only took appropriated what he, what he bought for me. So I, I, can, I will be forever grateful. Yeah. Yes. Well, well thank, thanks for having me on. I appreciate, appreciate your time. I know we all appreciate your time. So thank you. So I'm going to, I'm going to say goodbye to my watchers and my listeners, and I will see you guys um, next week. Um, yeah. Talk to you later. Bye.